to Revelation chapter 3. Tell somebody, have, have the, um, the church, we're in our sixth church, right? And have you been blessed with the lessons of the churches? Amen. Have you been transformed Amen. with the lesson of the churches? Have you been encouraged with the lesson of the churches? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was my first time and I'm encouraged. And for some reason, when I turned to that chapter, I went straight last week, I went straight to Laodicea for some reason. I don't get it. It seems like I missed out on verse one. But the funny thing about it, the, the way God set it up, I missed it today. And I'm talking about today, Sardis. And guess what the topic is? The Church of the Living Dead. Wow. Wow. Just perfect for Halloween for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the grown-ups who still um, don't get dressed. But if I catch them, I lay hands on you, little vampires. <laughs> Cast out your fangs. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, um, Revelation chapter 3. We're going to start with verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, right. Okay, stop right here. Because you know, I like to give you a little background about a city before we talk about that city. Is that all right? That's yes. okay. Praise the Lord. Now, Sardis is a city of Asia, minor, and capital of Lydia. It was the ancient residence of the kings of Lydia, among them, called um, Coasis. Now, the thing about it, um, Sardis had immense wealth, right? Um, Cyrus is said to have taken $600 billion, or $600 million, excuse me, from, from us, um, that city of Sardis when he attacked it. He took out $600 million. I don't know how much it would be now. Probably billions. But that's how much money that Sardis had. Now, um, worth of treasure, from the city when he captured it. Um, the art of dying wool is said to be invented there. It was taken and sacked by the army of Antiochus the Great. Afterward, it passed <coughs> under the dominion of the king of Pergamus. Its productive soil must always continue a source of wealth, but its importance as a central part appears to have diminished from the time of invasion of Asia by Alexander the Great. Now, the massive temple of Sybil still be witnessed in its um, fragmentary remains of the wealth and um, architecture still of the people was in Sardis. Now look at this here, that um, Sybil was the goddess they worship, you know? And, and I guess um, Sybil was a form, you know, they wear white like the resurrection, and we, we're gonna talk about it a little bit. You know, they wear all white, they do all these other things but they worship him. But now we're gonna look at a couple of things that was happening in Sardis and then we're gonna start with verse one. Um, Jesus gave a salutation to Sardis. The salutation, and he said unto the church, unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, save he, right? Save he that what? He that have the seven spirit of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou has a name, that thou livest and art dead, right? Um, it have a condemnation. I know thy works, that has a name, and thou livest and art dead. It has a counsel. Be watchful, straighten the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. The warning, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come to thee as a thief and I shall not know what hour I should come. I just feel a little preaching coming on. Amen, uh, amen, no, amen. Trying to teach. Now, he said, that has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white. I will not um, blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess uh, thy name before my father, and then for his angels. He that have been here, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. We'll go on verse one. He said unto the church, an angel of the church of saw this right. These things say he that have the seven spirits of God. And we know that God have all wisdom. 
the seven spirits of God. The spirit of God represents the Holy Spirit. He has all wisdom. He knows all things. He knows everything about you. He knows everything there is to know. Even before you know about it, he knows about it. Amen. He knows how, how everything is made, how it was made, how it will be made. He has the seven spirits of God. He has all the seven, come on, uh, 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 all seven talk about complete, complete wisdom is in God. It is not in man, but it's completely in God. There is no God like our God. Now he's saying here, in, in, in the seven stars, in the seven stars we represent the, the preachers and, 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 and the pastors. He said, I'll hold them, I know the wisdom. He said, I know thy works and thy has a name. And thou livest and are dead. He said, I know uh, uh, you have a name. I, I know you think you somebody. I, I, I know that you think you special because of what you got. I know you think you special because of what you possess. You have popularity. Everybody calling it your name. You look cute and nice. And you beautiful. And you think you all that. He said, I know you have a name. I, I, I know that uh, your name is special. I know that you think you all that. And, and you may be prideful in your ways. You have a name. You have a name to people. But you don't have a name with God. Uh, God don't know your name. They know you're on the block. They know you're on the city. Uh, you're a popular church. You're a church that everybody knows. You're a mega church. Uh, 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 everybody knows you. You're in television. You're in everywhere. You, you are in the limelight of life. You have a name. You, 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 you. You have a name. Uh, he said, and thou livest. You know you're living. You know you're doing your stuff. We gotta be careful when we know we're doing our stuff without Jesus. Yes. Well, uh, you, you're looking good without Jesus. You got a nice house without Jesus. You you got all your things. You living now. You got a job. You got a home. You got the man. You got the house. You got the car. You living. You living. Uh huh. You have everything you thought that you think that would make you all right. You have everything that you thought that you had that would make you happy. You think you living but I have a problem with it. I have a problem. I'm here. Uh, Jesus said, I'm here to let you know the truth about yourself. I'm not impressed with you. I'm not impressed with what you possess. I'm not impressed with what you have. I'm not impressed with your stuff. I'm not impressed with your fame. I'm not impressed with your glory. And he said, let me tell you something. The truth of the matter is you dead. You don't have anything. The more you think you live it, the more things you dead. What is Jesus saying to you? You see, without me, you're nothing. Uh, uh, he said the book of John that that, 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 that I am the branch and he is, my father is the, is the vine that without me, you can't do nothing. And, and you may have all the possession. You may have all the other things that you think you need to have, but your life is still empty. You're still unhappy. You're still depressed. You're still wretched with all the things that you think you got. You think you living. You think you got it all made. I don't need God as much as I need my God. I don't need him the way I used to need him anymore. I don't need to worship the way I need to worship my God. I don't need to praise him the way I need to. I, didn't go, I don't need to go all out for God the way I use him. I come when I feel like it. I worship when I feel like it. I give him my everything when I feel like it. I know you think you are living. I know that you think you got everything, but I come by here to tell you to church of saddest my God that you are dead you got all the stuff but you don't have Jesus in your church you got all the stuff you don't got Jesus in the house you got a big building but you don't got Jesus in the building you got a nice house but you don't got Jesus in the house you got the man but God ain't in the man you got the kids the, my God God ain't the kids you have to understand what makes living is me what makes everything to be important what makes everything if you have the business but Christ is not in it you all you got is some stuff baby. All you got is some things that you can have, but the greatest thing that you can have is the one that lives forever, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the everlasting one, the God of the very God. And the thing about it, you can get it twisted in life and begin to go after the things that's least important. Oh my God, you can go after all the stuff. You can go after the career and the business, but what is those things going to mean when you come into the judgment throne of God? What is the thing going to mean when you bring your name you see the thing is you may be a star in the world or you may be a star to man but when you come into the judgment throne room of God there is only one name that causes the angels to cry out holy there is only one name it is not going to be P. Diddy it's not going to be Beyonce it's not going to be none of those names it's not going to be your fame it's not going to be your glory they're not going to put you up and say this is the my God the producer of companies and this what you have but there's only one name in heaven that everybody going to bow down to 
you. There's only one name in heaven. What I'm trying to say to you, Jesus trying to come. My God, the church of sadness, a checkup from the neck. Uh, sometimes you can be prideful to think that God can do it without you. You can be prideful to come to think that God can do what he got to do without you. So he come to tell the church of Sardis, you coming in with your fur coat, you coming in with your Mercedes Benz and your Jaguars and all those other things that you got. But you got to understand, I'm not impressed with all of that because guess what? Where I live, the streets are paved with gold. What you trying to get is something I come and brush my teeth with in the morning. You see all those things you trying to come and get don't mean nothing, my God in heaven. The pearl, the gates are come with pearls and gemstones. I wear it in the breastplate. You got to understand all these other things that the world is looking after. All the other things that the world is seeking after. Jesus, that's what he said that you got to bring or seek after the things that give life and not the things that dead. He said you dead because guess what you're looking for? For dead stuff. You're looking for a house and car. Those are dead stuff. They don't mean nothing. But what means everything is the living God huh? that can give you life, that can give you strength, that can give you power, that can give you ability. We die every day for stuff. The world is going on all over. What I can eat and drink, what I can wear, what I can do, that's what you're worried about. You don't even have God in your mind and the goodness of God in your mind. That's what the Bible said. Seeking first the kingdom of God in all of his righteousness in all of these things shall be added on to you. In all of these things, the thing about is this. Satan got you on a trap. He got you like a little gerbil in a wheel seeking something that is dead. Messing with zombies in the cemetery. They have a form of life but they don't have real life. But the thing that got real life is Jesus Christ himself. He is a power. How can it is that the earth itself is a cemetery? A bunch of people playing with dead things. Dead my God. A dead boyfriend. A dead husband. A dead wife. A dead children. A dead career. A dead businesses. We play with zombies. But nobody is seeking God. The one that got true life and true strength. You putting all your energies in all the wrong things. But when you come to the house of God, there's no praise. There's no worship. There's no glory. There's no anything. We made it in the house of God. We made it in the church of God. But I come by here as a prophet of God. And I hung with Jesus. I know you think you all that. But you're dead today. I'm not impressed with you. Come on now. You look nice. You look cute. But Jesus said, I'm not impressed. What impressed me is your worship. What impressed me is your praise. What impressed me, come on now, is when you give me glory. What impressed me is when you give me honor. What impressed me is when you lift up your voice and recognize you got up this morning. Not because of your own power, but because the power of the one that lives forever woke you up this morning. That's why you got to give him praise. That's why you got to give him honor. Yes, Nobody hear me, 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 nobody's understanding, you worrying about what you're going to eat, Jesus said don't worry about it, I got food that you know not of, I got stuff that you know not of, you seeking after the superficial things, you seeking after the things that's not important, when he said when you worship me, I give you a real living being, when you worship me, I give you a man, I give you a husband that's holy and righteous because if you don't worship me what you're going to have is a dead man is a zombie having relations
relationship with a zombie. What is a zombie? It wants life, but it don't got life. It has a form of life, but it's drying up. Stop messing with things. That's worm is coming out of it. That putrefied. That's messed up. That's gonna gather dust. That's gonna go in the ground. But God said, "My God have mercy. I am the one that died, and the zombie could not keep me because I got resurrection power." Resurrection power. I can resurrect you from the dead things of your life. I can resurrect you. You think you got life, but you don't have the real life. If you don't got me, you don't got the real life. If you don't have me, what you got is what look like life. You always be disappointed. You always be sad. You always be hopeless. Because what God is saying, the reason you depressed huh? the reason you oppress huh? that's a sign that you're dealing with dead things huh? the minute you frustrated huh? I'm dealing with dead people huh? I'm trying to get you to go from A to B huh? maybe they're dead huh? because zombies don't got no life huh? all they going is all oh, moving around huh? but Jesus says stop messing in the cemetery huh? come in and begin to the real life huh? come in and begin to come to the real thing. I am the life. I am the strength. I am the resurrection. Not the stuff. Your prayer don't say I'm resurrected. Your cars don't mean I'm resurrected. Your makeup building don't mean I'm resurrected. When God, my God, when light is in the house, it's when those that's broken begin to get healed again. When those that's messed Stop, uh, begin to get their mind again. Uh, you can get the stuff, uh, but there's no power in the house. Uh, there's no glory in the house. Uh, what God is saying today uh, is we're looking for the dead things, uh, but you got to look for the life in the house. I ain't trying to preach, but this is the way it's going. This is the way it's going. My God. I try not to preach up in here. But guess what? This is the way it's going today. We don't know where we're going with it, but this is the way it's going. Come on, tell somebody, God, speak up in here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be bullets flying. You better duck. You better grab them kids and put them down. Because God is coming after this house. God is coming after the body of Christ. He said, what you're looking for? If nobody tell you, it is a dead issue. There's no life in it unless I breathe life in it. It's never going to work. On this, I breathe my life in it. It's never gonna get up. All you're gonna be doing is kissing a dead woman. All you're gonna be doing is kissing a dead man. Because why? I didn't blow my life. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. You got it, but inside you dissatisfied. That's to let you know I'm dealing with a dead thing. You got the job, but you dissatisfied. Because why? I'm dealing with a dead thing. It has no life in it. It has a semblance of life in it. But Jesus trying to bring the church of Sardis, trying to bring the church of this age. As they stop playing in the cemetery, you singing in the cemetery, you sing you worshiping in the God, in the cemetery of life. You are preaching in the pulpit of a my God of stone that says rest in peace. There's no light in it. Only can come out because God said when I come in the cemetery, I don't preach to my God in the cemetery. I speak to the cemetery. If you understand it, my God, my God had mercy. There was a man by the name of Lazarus. He was in the cemetery of life. But Jesus didn't come to preach to it. Jesus came to speak to it. My God have mercy. He said this when there come a day that all them that 
was dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and wake up again. What am I saying to you today? You walking around, you got life, but you don't got real life. What Jesus is saying, you are really dead. Why does he say that you have? There's going to come a day when you're going to hear the voice of the Son of Man. There's going to come a day that God's going to wake you up from your situation. Because why? Because you dead to it. You oblivious to it. You can't see nothing in it. But God is saying, you're going to hear my voice. That's why he said, today if you hear my voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. Because guess what happened? There's going to be another waking up of the church. There's going to be another resurrection of the church because what the church is looking for is not the spirit of God but it's really looking my God is looking for God in what you possess in what you own in what you have but what God is saying you still in the cemeteries because zombies the only thing they're looking for is a brain they don't got no other thing to think about the minute they wake up in the morning they're looking for all brain the minute you wake up in the morning what you're looking for is what you can own and possess and not knowing that the true gift the true life is in Jesus Christ himself you don't seek him why is it so hard to get up in the morning on a Sunday but it's not wrong to get up on a Monday to get worship in the altar call your job why is it so hard for you to give God praise but guess what every Friday payday you get praise to your job you get praise to your boss but it's hard to give God praise you said to yourself I don't feel good that's why I don't want to praise but when you got a cold when your body shake you still go to the altar call your job and guess what you do there you get praise into the altar but you telling me you can't give God praise the one who blessed you regardless of what the one who woke you up despite your rebellion the one who put you in your feet when you didn't want to be put on your feet you're going to tell me my God that you can't give him glory so Jesus told the church of Sardis you are dead you got stuck but in heaven you consider to be dead so Jesus said in verse 2 be watchful watch out I'm coming for you oh guess what guess what he said watch out I'm coming behind your back you think you got it all together but I'm coming you don't know when I'm coming you can enjoy yourself right God you got to understand that little thing you got I'm a snatch it to let you know I'm God and there's no God beside me he said be watchful and straighten the things which remain that are ready to die for I have not found that was perfect before God you try your best but your heart not in it you come into church but your heart not in it. You don't got no joy when you come in the house. It's like you meaning a quota. You forgot where I brought you from. You forgot what I did in you. Be careful when you come to the house. Be careful because you come in because you say, Pastor, I might say something. But I come to tell you, I'm not God and I don't have a reward for you. But God is telling me to tell you, be watchful. Repent, shrink the things that remain before you lose it completely. Begin to gird up. Begin to fix the little things you need to fix in your life. Because guess what? Satan wants to see you like we. He wants to take you. So I got to gather the things that still remain. 
I got a little praise. I got to straighten it. I got a little worship. I got to straighten that. I got a little hope. I got to straighten that. Can I tell you something? At least you got a little something. What you got to do now is fix yourself. Uh, realign yourself uh, before you lose everything. Uh, don't get caught up by God in mercy. Uh, if I give you a husband, uh, my God, don't get caught up in him. Uh, if I give you a wife, uh, don't get caught up on her. If I give you some kids, don't get caught up on them and begin to use that as an excuse uh, to why you can't do what you got to do for me. Uh, because you've got to understand those things came from God. That's right. Amen. Amen. If you got a little business, huh? know where it came from. So he told them here, the church of Sardis, huh? be watchful. Be watchful. I'm watching you. Be watchful. I'm paying attention to you. Be watchful. Straighten the things that remain. What do I mean by straighten something? When something is weak, you got to take off the old boards. That's weak in the house. Don't try to put a carpet over it and try to say you're fixing it. No, baby. You got to pull the whole thing up and buy some new wood ha, and reinforce the strength of it all again. Ha. What is that God is saying? Ha. He told the first church ha, return to your first love. Ha. My God have mercy. Ha. Get back to your first love. Ha. Get back to what's important to you. Ha. Get back to the one that gives you life. Ha. Get back to the one ha, that saved you. Ha. Get back to the one ha, that deliver you. Ha. Get back to the one ha, that set you free. Ha. He said, I got one problem. Ha. You left your first love. Ha. Your man was not your first love. Ha. The wife is not the first love. Ha. Your career is not the first love. Ha. What you possess is not the first love. Ha. What you own is not the first love. Ha. The mega church is not the first love. Ha. The ministry is not the first love. Ha. Your gifting is not the first love. Ha. Your first love is ha, Jesus ha, that died for you. Ha, that buried and rose in the third day. Ha, he is your first love. Ha. Go back and fall in love with him again. Ha. Straighten what we mean. Ha. Straighten the little bit of me that's still in you. Ha. Before it goes out completely. Ha. Straighten the little bit of me ha, that's in your soul. Ha. Before you lose it completely. Completely, ha. A little Jesus ha, is better than no Jesus, ha. but you got to straighten it. Ha. Get back your faith. Ha. Get back your hope. Ha. Who made you lose your worship? Ha. Who made you lose your hope? And they are your God. Ha. But get back your first love. Ha. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Ha. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Ha. Because can I tell you something? Ha. Satan can help you chasing all those things that's not important. Ha. Chasing career. Ha. Chasing men. Chasing women. Chasing all these other things. Ha. And guess what? Ha. And you lose the sight of God. Ha. But tell somebody. Ha. That's why you hurt him. Ha. That's why you in pain. Ha. Because you lost your compass. Ha. You lost your focus. Ha. You start focusing on other stuff than on Jesus. Ha. But tell somebody. Ha. I'm I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going back to the place where I'm supposed to be at. I'm going back to the place. I'm going to be like Abraham. Stay here with the donkeys. I got to go and worship him. I got to go and give him glory. Because when I get back to God, he's going to realign everything back in my life. Tell somebody it is time for me to realign my life. Life. My life has been about Jimmy. My life has been about.
about Jane. I got to get them out of my head. I got to get them on my mind. Because they got my thought. Can I tell somebody? Whoever possesses your head, possess your life. Do Jesus possess your life? Oh, person or thing got your head. Can I tell you something? My God have mercy. John the Baptist was preaching. And guess what? Herod's wife wanted his head. Because guess what? If I got his head, I got his life. That's what she says. Bring his head in the platter. Because why? If the enemy got your head, he got your life. He don't need to take anything else. Can I tell you something? I've never seen you walk upside down by your feet. Because your feet can't lead you. What leads you is your If I have your head, I have your life. Funky to somebody today, the devil is after your head. Because if I have your head, I'll direct your your life. Tell somebody I'm not going to give my head. See? You think that if you give your heart to somebody, they're going to need you. No, you give your head to them. Because that's all you think about. Them. So you didn't give your heart. You give your head. Now look at this. Straighten what remain. Straighten what remain. I was... um. Reading something about the eyes are unuseful when your mind is blind. When your mind is blind, your eyes is unuseful. It has no meaning for you to have eyes if your mind is blind. That's why a lot of us have spiritual blindness. Okay. A blind person needs guidance because they can't see. But the truth about it, they have more senses than us. But when you're spiritually blind, that's why they call the prophet the seer. Because he sees a whole lot more further than you can ever see. You may have... 14-14 um, vision. He got 30-30 vision. Teach, teach. Yes, God. That's why in the olden days, when the kings wanted to make decisions and they wanted to go somewhere, they say, is there a prophet? Is there a prophet that I can... Even kings understood their sight is limited. And the enemy knows if I have your mind. And I taught on Sunday, on Friday, that the devil got everybody, their mind blinded. Their mind is blind. They cannot see they're going to hell. They can't see they're dying. Why would you keep putting your head in the fire knowing you're going to be burned? Why do you keep your hands on fire? You know. And somebody say, I would never do that. Then why you keep going back to a man, you know, keep hurting? Why keep getting beat up? Why keep getting, see, because there's something more that got you. It's called blindness. Because the enemy has you here. And God has to free your mind so you can see clearly. You say here. Strengthen the things that remain. Right? Look at this. You're going to see it. He said, because thou sayest, I'm rich. What is it? I'm rich. Well, well, he said, remember therefore, no, he said, remember therefore how thou has received and heard and hold fast and repent. He said, remember what you had. Remember what you, don't forget what you learned. 
Don't forget what you receive. You know sometimes you can't forget what you learn. Yes. He said, don't forget what you learn. The enemy always wants you to forget what you learn. Yes. He said, remember, remember therefore how that has received and heard and hold fast and what? Repent. What does repent have to do? A change of mind. Whichever direction you were thinking, go think the opposite. Now, if therefore that shall not watch, I will come as on, on thee as a thief, and thou shall not know what hour I will come upon thee. He said, when I come to take what you got, you don't know when I'm coming. So I'm warning you before I come that you fix some things, that you check some things in your life. You know the funny thing about people, they fix something for a week and go right back to it. Why is that? Because they never really change anything in their heart. They really never change anything in their heart. True transformation comes in when the heart is changed. I tell people, don't tell me you changed. Show me you changed. Because you can tell me anything. You can say anything. See, people will tell you. Can I tell you the power of deception? People will tell you something just to keep you in bondage. Yes. Words is powerful. Words is the most powerful thing in the world. Because the enemy knows this, right? You need two things. Affirmation, you need love, and you need affirmation. Right? You need love, you need affirmation. You know, you need somebody to love you. You need somebody to affirm you. You want to be accepted. The devil knows that. And guess what? You know when you become dangerous? When you don't need that from no man. Most of you in life, myself included, you hear. You need love and you need affirmation. You, you want to feel needed. And you will allow yourself to be deceived just so you can feel needed. All right. Just so you can feel needed, you will allow yourself to be deceived, to be blind, because what? All in the name of love. And the devil knows that. Now, you don't know what hour I'm coming. And God will tell us to be, you will have a warning that something is about to happen, but you will not do anything to change it. Nobody. You act like if you special, it will never happen to you. Not me. Speak, speak. I'm cool. I'm different. I'm special. Don't you know? When you look at special, I'm in the dictionary. It says special. I'm different from everybody else. Amen. That's what the devil will make you believe. Yes. Before you get hit. He'll, he'll keep you on a lullaby. And time will pass you by. And Jesus said, look. I'm telling you what I'm telling you so you can repent. Amen. I was telling the leadership today, this morning, you're not getting any younger. Amen. Yeah, I was telling them, the babies in there, I was telling them, you're, you ain't babies no more, you're grown. Amen. You're grown folks. Don't, try, don't expect me to go cuckoo because you 30 something now. Amen. Act grown. Amen. You, you have to understand what got you in your last situation was a wrong decision. Yes. Yes. Stop making things on emotions. Okay. I preach to you and I'm teaching. Now that I'm my sister. Now I'm teaching to you. Stop making decisions on emotions. I love them. So? What does that mean? Jesus. Love don't feel that way. 
Love is not that way. Can I tell you something? If you don't know what love is, somebody will define it to you. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. I'm here to free somebody today. I'm here to break some things off you. Because if you don't, there's some things that's going to happen. If you don't remain, if you shrimp, don't threaten what remains, you're going to lose some things. When it happened, don't say it was in. And God keep warning you. And God keeps saying things to you. You say, ain't going to happen to me. Ain't going to happen. And put my hands on the fire. Ah, I didn't burn. Because you know what? The Bible said, do not frustrate the grace of God. Yes. Do not frustrate His grace and thinking that you're going to escape and you're going to be all right. But God give us a time. See, don't take it because God didn't judge last time that it's okay. Now, shrinken those um, that remain. Oh, I'm going to come as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Look, thou has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Can I tell you, in the midst of everybody going crazy, there are some people who going to stand up and do right by God. Yes. Yes. Not everybody is, is quitting. Not everybody is laying down and compromising. Right. That's right, amen. Not everybody Jesus. is. Not everybody is, is doing things their own way. There are some people, they'd rather be lonely than just compromise the things of God. Glory. You know what? Thank you, Lord. And I'm talking to the men, and I'm talking to the women. Stop um, devaluing your anointing. Yes. Let me say it again. Stop devaluing your anointing of in your life or a piece of porridge. Amen. Stop, stop devaluing your anointing for a man and devaluing yourself. And then you thinking you, you lose it. you're losing something more. You're losing your anointing. Yes. And a man is the same way. You're losing your anointing. Don't lose your anointing for a man, woman, job, career, or anything Amen. else. There is nothing more valuable than your anointing. Amen. That's the power of God in your life. Can I tell you something? It is a season... That you need to stop living for yourself Amen. and begin to live for other people. There are people who's hurting. Yes. That yes. needs you. Yes. But because you're not in your place, because you're selfish and you want to live your life, uh -huh. God is coming. Yes. And He's going to tap you in your shoulder. Yes. And He's going to ask you one thing What did you do? with what I gave you. Wow. And you're going to say, I don't know I had something. Yes, you do. I told you. Now, what did you do with it? Well, Jimmy and Jane, I don't want to hear that. What did you do with what I gave you? What did you do? How many people this morning, you came in, did you call and tell them, come to church with me and hear the word? Wow. Jesus. And then you're in here praying, God filled the church. Hold up. Why are you here? You make the calls. You get them in to hear the word. You get them in so they can be free. You get them in because the power of God is here. Yes. But the mentality of the church is this. You come into church as a spectator and not a participator. Leaders, how many... This year alone, how many people you brought to the Lord? Don't lift your hands. I don't want to embarrass nobody. How many people you or you busy talking about the church and you ran them away? That's a question to all of us. Who, who have you brought? Who have you devalued Christ to by the way you live? Mm. Laying up with everybody and you tell them about Jesus. Mm. And they said, which Jesus you serve? Mm. Buddha? Mm. Confucius? Which one? Tell me. So you see that when he comes in, the church is more concerned about what house I'm going to get, what car I'm going to get, what things. We need to stop treating Jesus like he's a genie. Amen. 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 He is not your genie. And 
you have more right now. Let me tell you something. You got more than somebody in a third world country has. Yes. Yes. They live in a hut, yes. probably the size of that bathroom, and it's dirt. And they're happy. Yeah, they are. You got phone, you got cable, you got some things you don't need. iPad and all those stuff. I have them too. I need to <laughs> But but what, what I'm saying to you, but what, but what I'm saying to you, when you're really looking upon the heart of Christ, is you're not worrying about my neighbor. There is no difference between you. Right? And the guys that jumped the Samaritan men and left them there. Who? 27 to 17 is coming. And we, we, we looking for revival, but we're not revived. Right. What you're looking for is, is really, you know what I've seen in the church in 20 something years? Is that a lot of people treat Jesus like a drug pusher. Wow. You got your arm out for him to give you your fix. Yeah. Once you get your fix, we don't see you no more. Yeah. Until the need come back. And that's like the pusher. Can I tell you something? Satan is also a pusher. He gives you the first hit free. That's right. That's right. That's why you should give your body to a young man because he he got that first hit. Hit he got you hooked, and your and your emotion is crazy. Okay, you, you have to understand how woman woman works by emotion. Yes, they do. A man can have sex with you, don't have no emotion. Yes, teach, 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 teach. And you're gonna tell him, I thought we were in love. Well, I know. Who told you that? You were in love, I huh? did. <laughs> it's not true though. Teach us. You're a fix. Look, tell somebody this. See, what makes you valuable? Isaiah trying to uh, close me out here. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Mike. <laughs> He's trying to close me out. <laughs> Bring it in. <laughs> you know, I say I'm, I'm messing with you. <laughs> Amen. Do you know what makes you more, more valuable is not your beauty? You, you know what makes a man also more handsome? It's not his look, it's his sight. We, we, we're talking something deeper. It is your exclusivity. What makes a Bible more valuable, uh, well, it is a diamond more valuable than any other thing, gems. You gotta dig deeper. You never, some gems you find on top of the earth. But a diamond you gotta work harder yes, for. Yes, yes. Why is that? Because it takes more pressure Amen. to be made. Amen. And if and if a man wants you, he gotta put on his work hard. Yes. Amen. 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 He gotta go into the darkness and he gotta take a he got to be committed with a shovel yes. and a pickaxe. Yes. He got to dig the hard stuff out. Yes. And I think he dig the hard stuff, take a shovel and begin to dig. Yes. Create a tunnel. You got to keep digging, digging, digging. And you know the thing is, when he found you, you don't look like a diamond yet. No. Glory to God. He gotta take you out. He gotta buff you. He gotta shine you. 
Because what you see in the window at the jewelry store that you want in its purest form, you would not want it. That's true. Yes, God. That's what you ladies are supposed to be. Amen. Amen. I don't care how beautiful you are. It's your rarity. That's why a man will buy you. Amen. Men, what makes you special is not you. Every woman in town want, needs you and wants you. And every woman in town knows your name. That's what makes you. That's not what makes you valuable to her. It's when she can see God in you. I want you to call me Lord. He ain't gonna call you Lord. I don't see no Lord in it. Now. Now look at this. He said, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Let me tell you something. Not everybody is worthy to walk with you. Okay. Jesus said that's what the only person who's gonna walk with me is the people that went through and kept that they didn't bow down. Amen. Some of you are thinking, oh, I'm gonna make it. No, you're not. No, no, no. The garment is all purple, green, stain on it. Then you're going to tell Jesus, I'm going to make it. And I know that religious people, oh no, you're being hard. You've been knowing. This is what Jesus said. He said, there are some people who didn't bow down. He said, they're going to be worthy to walk with me. See, the thing about the church, you want to make it in your way. You're not. You can't even make it to the club your way. <laughs> well, I'm coming up with sneakers. No, they said, right there, no sneakers. <laughs> They gonna put your hip out, but you you gonna think you gonna come into the kingdom your way? I'm walking in my way. I'm booking in the my other name. Y'all don't know me? No. They be like Saint Peter, come take him. Take you right out the gate. <laughs> now now look at this. He that overcomes. Do I have any overcomers? In he said, see. I love English, the word, he said, he that overcome. He didn't say overcome. He said, he that overcome it. Okay. You didn't overcome one time. No. You keep coming. Okay. That means there's, there's going to be many obstacles you're going to have to jump over. There's going to be many trials you have to come over. There are many things you're going to have to deal with. There are many things. He didn't say he's going to take you out of it, but he said he that overcome it. Every time something comes, you hurdle it. And then guess what? Have you ever lived your life? You, you, you overcome one thing and another thing comes? Yes. Boom. You overcome one thing and you go, oh glory. And you keep on jumping and you keep on jumping. And don't think you're going to get saved because you were faithful five years ago. That's right. Even Janet Jackson know better. She said, what have you done for me? That's like you tell your mother, but I loved you 10 years ago. But I mean now. Tell your man, I loved you, you know, you know, when, you know, 20 years. No. Have you, are you loving me now? Amen. What have you done for me lately? Amen. How many souls did you touch? How many people you got to come and hear the word? Yeah, you're preaching and you say all these things in here and God is this and God is that, but can it be the greater deception as you? Why, why is the greater deception? You speak something that you don't believe. Because if you believe it, you'll do something about it. And some of us, our lives are so shabby, we can't even go out and invite people because now they know already you're a hypocrite because you were drinking, right. sleeping, wow. doing everything with them. And how is it I'm going to invite you to come in and say, be with me, and, I'm not, and I have not lived my life in front of you. And how many times God is going to say, how many people are dying because of you? He said, he that overcometh, 
the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angel. Look at this. <coughs> Let me show you the word here. He said, I'm going to blot out your name. Yeah. Right? Okay. That means your name was in there. So if your name can be in there, your name can be erased. I know. It's Bible. And I know we jump in church. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm... No. No. The one who's going to make it is he that endures to the end. Let me show you the state of it. And not talking about it. There's so much in the church that's going on. But there's a picture I saw today that, that bothers me. They had a pastor and they had a God who's a first lady holding him like that. And this is the state of the church. And he's standing like this holding the man and he's a and he's a pastor, he got the collar in, and his first lady is a man. Jesus. But you're still in here playing church. Wow. Now they need salvation like everybody else. I'm not saying it as a point of judgment. I'm saying it as a point of reality. This is where we came from. This is how it's getting. And it's worse. This is where it's at. And you busy playing church and thinking, this is now we must shrink what remains. Amen. We must shrink the, the integrity of God, the character, the holiness, the goodness of God. We shouldn't have church just so we can make a money and make a quota. Just so we can come together and make a, make a building. If God does it, then so be it. Whatever God wants to do. But we are forgetting why we're here. Wasn't the, um, the, the leaders from um, the, the worship team talking about why we hear some song or something like a new song? They were singing. You know? Well, we forgot why we're here. We forgot why Jesus died. And you forgot what he did for you. You forgot. You forgot. You, you, you forgot that in, in somewhere along the, the line, the devils have been preaching to you that you're okay and everything is all right. And you can make, no, he said, I'm going to blot out your name. That means your name was there and your name can be, and it's not being said for you to be fearful. It's being said for you to be watchful. Amen. That goes for me because Paul said this, I don't want to preach the word of God and me, myself, be a castaway. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being watchful. I'm, I'm not here just preaching to you. I have a relationship with God. I don't preach to you on, on Sunday because, you know, I, I read the Bible just to come preach to you. No, I forgot. See, one thing I told God, forget the title. I don't care about being a pastor or whatever. What I care about is being more. The title I care about more is a son and being a worshiper. Amen. Yes, that's right. Amen. You know what's the worst thing is? It's when you forgot why you got married. You forgot you love each other. Now you hate each other. You seen people that happen? Yes. They used to love each other. What happened? Now they hate each other. They want to get divorced. You take the kids, this or you do this. Why? Because they forgot why they were here. And guess what happened? When you forgot why you were here, Christ said it. Somebody forgot why. My feelings is more important than the why. My being right is more important than why. Don't let your need be more important than the why. Don't let what you want be more important than the Because when you're going through in life and you see yourself come to church and you can't worship because you're more worrying about the issues that you're dealing with maybe you have to be careful because you maybe you're forgetting the why you came here the devil 
will have you more concerned about your issues, you not having money, you being broke, and you worrying about, I need to have a house. I won't be happy till I get married. I won't be happy till I do this. I won't be happy till I have this. So you spending all your days asking God um, to give you those things to be happy. And the funny thing about the devil, he forgot to see, you, he, see, you, you totally forgot that happiness and joy is not the things, but it's something inside. Amen. That I can be happy. See, if I'm not happy without the stuff, I'll never be happy with it. Amen. So the devil will have you in a loop. You ever seen what you call them, the little hamsters? In a loop? He have you going like this, looking for something. Hoping for something in church, looking for something in church, and you, you, you know, it's like you have the kids, and you've been praying for God to bless you with it. You're more worried about the problem of having a kid than enjoy the kid itself. You you want a husband, you got a good husband, but you use the bad ones. You can't even enjoy what you got. That's the kind of life the devil will have you have. You he'll give it to. You. Without God, he'll give it to you, but the whole thing is, the devil will give you miserable while you have it. But guess what? How many people say that I'm going to hold on, I'm going to overcome, I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on God. Now look at this. He said, he said here, and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He said, I'm going to let them know I'm committed to you because you were committed to me. Now look what he says here. He that have an ear, let him hear. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He saw this thought he had to make. Somebody said, you can play now. <laughs> you helping me now, man. You know, he's saying that in the sense of that he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. God knows your need. God knows what you're going through. But don't let those things be more important than God. Don't let life consume you. Don't let life so much consume you, you forget God. Don't let it consume you, you forgot, you know, what is more important. And you know what is so crazy, right? How you so grown and you forgot how to be a kid. You forgot how to enjoy certain things. Do you remember when you was a kid, you said, when I become a grown-up, I'm not going to do this, and now be, you become just like the very people you talked about. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 48. I want to have a pajama party now. Oh, yeah, yeah. The boys are, yeah. we're going to watch the game. Yeah. 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 And I dare somebody tell me I can't be a That's kid. That's right. That's right. That's right. You don't understand why the devil will have you paying bills, paying rent, mm -hmm. paying electric, paying this. Get up every day, do it over for 60, 70 years of your life. And you never took time to smell the roses. You never took time to take a walk in the park. You know what's so funny? The devil will have you go all over the world, take an airplane to enjoy something that you can enjoy here. That's right. That's right. That's so true. Yes. And say, hey, look at this. I'm on vacation. Hold up, you could have took a vacation today. Just walk in the park. He that over, he that had an ear. Let him hear. The church of Sardis forgot what was important. They forgot the most important thing. Right? They got all the stuff. They got the cows, they got the houses, they got the makeup ministries, they got everything. But they forgot one person in the equation. So if I have to close, right? Use a word to close today. Close it. Close it well. I would say one thing. Don't forget God. Out of everything you're searching for, you're trying to have, you're trying to possess, you're trying to own, turn to somebody and prophesy. And say, don't forget God. Don't forget God. Sardis did. Sardis did, and, and, it, and it became a zombie church. Zombies wearing furs, cars, 
professional zombies, zombies who got everything, but guess what they don't have? God. So if I have to put it in a nutshell, don't forget God and your pursuit of life. And your pursuit of happiness, don't forget God. And your pursuit of happiness, don't forget God. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I purposely don't go out on Saturdays because you know what? I'm not forgetting about it. Because you know what? On Sundays, I want to give my best. Amen. So if I'm going out, you better get me from the hours of um, 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 11 to 6. So everybody knows that's my Sabbath. You can't get me with nothing. I don't. I'm just... Because when I'm ready... I, I want to give God my best. So I, I put my life around God. I don't do the other way around. Everything I do, I do it from God's point of view. Not God's second. I remember when I was a minister, um, I was looking for a job. And, I, and they wanted me to work Sunday. I had to say no. That's right. I can't do it. Well, you gotta do some people, you gotta do what you gotta do. I said, I don't know. I'm a hard worker. You know? I, I don't mind working. But I ain't gonna give up God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't forget God. Don't forget God. Son, don't be so tired that you can't give God everything you should. Don't work so hard. When it comes to God, He wants your strength, not just your body. When you come here, you want to be fresh. Okay, I'm not saying this to tell you. You have a husband, right? You have a wife. Shante, your husband come home. You haven't seen him for a while. Right? And that you want to spend time. And while you're talking to him, how would you feel? Hurt. That's what the Bible said there. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, with all your spirit. Love him with every single part of you. That's why I teach the ministers, don't go out and party on Saturdays and you don't got no strength to give to God on Sundays. You got no strength, you got no ability, you got no power, you got no nothing. Give God everything you have. Amen. Solomon said that, let me tell you the whole conclusion of life. Uh -huh. Fear God. Uh -huh. Fear God. Fear God. I don't know why people are having all these other things in church. Know why you're here. Amen. Know why you come. Amen. Know why you're serving the Lord. And guess what? If He don't give you the house, if He don't give you the car, if He don't take you out, if He don't do none of those things, He's not enough. All those things doesn't Amen. say to you that He's not God. He's still God. Yes. He's still God. Amen. He's still God. He's still God. Amen. He's still God. I remember my prayers to God, right? I remember when I used to be um, 20 something, and I remember I used to go in my room and I used to worship God. And my mother said, Why do you worship the way you do? You act like you kill somebody. She <laughs> said, You're too young. You act like you, know, you kill somebody. You worship the way you do. You worship. And I remember all my prayers in those days was not about God giving me something. You know, make me speak. Let me speak for you. Let me be your mouthpiece. I want more of you. I want you and you alone, God. I want your presence, and I want your glory, and I want your goodness. It was a prayer out of the pureness. Now our prayer is, God, give me the house. Give me the car. Give me the land. Would you want to talk to somebody that the first thing they come to talk to you is put you? Or do you want somebody to say, 
Not because of anything. I don't want nothing. I just love you. 